at it again. Right behind me, we have a 1974 Chrysler Newport. We call them shockers in the derby world. We're gonna be taking this car to the Juab County Demolition Derby, and we're gonna be running this in the stock class. You might notice it's already built. It's pre-ran. My buddy Parker Lazenby ran this at the Heber City Derby in the stock class. He made one hit, got hung up, sold the car to me. We don't have time to build a car, but we got time to drive one. We're gonna get this in the air. We're gonna pull the rear end out, pull the drive shaft out. We're gonna be putting in my rear end, my drive shaft, and we're gonna be putting in a new brake pedal, securing the battery, doing a lot of little things to make this car competitive, but make it to where we think we can win. Man, it looks like we're a tire factory here. I know, what set goes on my brother? I'm gonna do the hard work and I'm gonna pull these Drive line bolts out while well, Hillbilly, you know what? I don't even know what he's doing, but he's gonna be doing it. No wonder Park made one hit and got stuck. Why is that? These are street slicks on the back of this. No yeah. traction. That's true. Couldn't back himself out of a corner. Watch your noggin. Whoa! I said, watch your noggin. Holy cow. So we sent our tow truck driver today to Nephi, Utah, and got us a bolt on. Oh. Yes, it fits. So what this is, is a bolt-on tail shaft so that we can put on a slider drive shaft. I so nominate we'll... you to be the one to drill the hole and tap it. Okay, well, I'm not scared to drill that, so. Ooh, they're tight. Hi, Chihuahua. Very tight. Check it out. Got me a new drill. <laughs> Non-sponsored. I just love Milwaukee. We'll let Muscle House take this one off. Oops. <laughs> Whoa! One thing I forgot to mention, it's Thursday night. The Derby's Saturday afternoon. So, yet again, we are down to two days. What are you so tired for? You just crank that for a minute. <laughs> what are you so tired for? What are you doing? I don't know what oh, he was wow. about. You feel that socket? <laughs> don't know what Hillbilly's problem was. I got him right off. I loosened him. Oh! Why didn't you catch mine? So what we're gonna do, because it's late and we're tired and our ugga duggas are gone, we're gonna let it down and we're gonna set it on jack stands and then push it through the leaf spring. Okay, get ready. Oh, there goes more concrete. All right, so this is our GM rear end. It's a stock, stock rear end, but it's just set up to go right inside of a Buick or an Impala. We're gonna be cutting off all our mounts so that we can install this axle on leaf springs instead of coil springs and control arms. We're gonna get the plasma, cut them off real nice so that we can weld the perches off of this onto it. And then when we're done with this car, we'll weld all these brackets back on and put it back into a GM car. All right, so we got a lot of stuff to do, but it's getting pretty late, so it is tomorrow. Oh, look at that. First try. Oh yeah. Tell me you're proud of me. For the first time? Yeah. Good job. Tell me you're proud of me. I've taught you well. Tell me you're proud of me. I've taught you well. Tell me you're proud, proud of me. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. At least somebody's proud of me. There you got go. it. I'm gonna leave Hillbilly to do some work because we've got a pool party. What's up? I like your glasses. Kind of fancy. I don't want to pull them and let go because it might hurt. <laughs> so, I've already took the brake caliper off. Now I'm going to cut around the inner part of this rotor, get it out of the way because it being on there is just a nuisance and it can cause issues. So, let's get rid of those issues before they happen. Brakes, man. How's he supposed to stop? Who needs brakes? Front brake calipers and rotors done. Trans coolers half done. Me and Hillbilly are gonna manhandle this rear end. We're gonna put it up in the leaf springs, get it into position, and then we're gonna weld the perches, and then we're gonna bolt it down. 
All right, so I went ahead and lifted this up in here. Hillbilly just watched me get it taken care of. Yeah, I watched. <laughs> we're gonna measure it, figure out where our perches need to go, and then we're gonna weld it. We're not gonna weld it yet. We wanna get the angle of the tail shaft and this angle the exact same. So our next plan, we gotta drill and tap the output shaft for this bolt-on yoke so that we can get the drive line put in. What do you think, that's... Oh yeah, that's plenty. That's plenty. We'll go a little bit more for good luck. All right, got this thing tapped. We'll get this out, get it bolted on, and move on to the drive line. So what we like to do is put a little gasket maker on the inside and the outside so that no oil tries to come out the bolt hole. We've got that tightened up right where we need it. We'll just clean this up a little bit. It'll sit overnight. The gasket maker will seal up really good. Oh, while we were at it, we found bolts to bolt the drive line on so we don't have to mess with them. Okay, now we just have to figure out this angle and this angle. They're pretty dang close, to be totally honest. I'm just getting these spring parts welded. I'm tacking it in all four corners so we can roll the rear end and weld the center points. Got one side done, how to do the other. So I've got this all tacked and we're gonna rotate this rear end so I can finish welding it and put it back on. We got this all welded. Now we're gonna put it back in place. We bought brand new U-bolts. So we're gonna get this thing tightened down and this rear end is gonna be installed. 11.07 p.m. Friday night, Derby's tomorrow night. So we've got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow. But we're tired, so we're gonna come and hit it at about six o'clock in the morning and get this thing done. It is tomorrow. I slept in, my alarm never goes off, ever. So we got here a little bit late, but we got the drive shaft in, it's all tightened up. We've got the rear end in. The only thing we need to do is get the shocks hooked up, but we don't have rear tires yet. So we're gonna let this down, figure out what we need to do on the top side, start doing that, and then we're gonna get some wheels and tires, get those mounted, get them on, and then we're painting this thing. All right, so after getting inside this car, I didn't feel very e good about it, so I'm changing the battery box, brake pedal, I'm gonna put a new fuel pump in it, I'm gonna rewire it, and I'm gonna put my window bars in it. So we've got a lot more stuff to do. I think it's gonna be that much better. So what I'm doing, this is my window bars. I'm gonna make it bolt in. So I'm just gonna blast a couple holes where we can put some big long bolts in it and clamp that thing to the roof and clamp it to the firewall. All right, so for those of you that don't understand what that bar is that we just put in, it's called a window bar. That way, if something comes up into the windshield, it goes up and over the roof. It doesn't come straight in. So like if this hood wants to kick back, it's gonna hit that window bar and go up, not come in and do some damage. So right now, I am moving the factory brake booster. So we have clearance because we don't want nothing uh, getting smashed underneath to uh, cause the motor not to run, like spark plug wires, valve cover, leak oil, blow the motor up. So we're trying to eliminate them issues. We need to get the seatbelt put in. I think it's about time to get a new five-point harness. Anybody out there got good suggestions on a five-point harness? This doesn't look too safe. It's tearing, got a hole. I had to cut a hole for the brake line to go through. It may not seem like much, but that half-inch grade eight bolt is gonna save your life in a demolition derby. Seatbelt is expertly installed. We've got half the pedals done. We've got the battery box done. We've got a charged battery, roof sign, tires, pedals, paint. Paint, wire, bleed brakes. And we're gonna test this battery, make sure it fits. Oh, no way. But it'll fit. Yeah, can you get it back out to center it? You pull it up. <laughs> I say, can you? You. <laughs> Look, I got it. Almost. I'm gonna raise the car up so we can hook up the brake lights. When Robbie gets back, we can bleed the brake. Brake line hooked up. Now I'll do the gas pedal, brake pedal, and battery box bolts. So what I'm about to do is highly recommended not to try. But I'm gonna climb up 
to bleed brakes. While I sit underneath the car. <laughs> Okay, ready? Pump it up. Hold it. Pump it. Heard a lot of air. Yeah. Still a ton of air. We're getting there. It's like 10 o'clock right now and we have to be on the road by two o'clock. It takes four hours to paint. Plus we still gotta mount up four tires and wheels. Still gotta do a fuel pump. Ugh, lots of stuff. Still getting air. So you have to bleed this until there is no air bubbles in the system at all. You cannot have a single bubble or you'll lose your pedal. Closer. Pump it up five times. Okay. It was like seven. <laughs> Dude, we're still getting so much air. Three, three, four, three, five, three, six. 25 pumps. All right, very little air. Forty-eight pumps that time. You know you can pump it like five times and it'll do just the same exact thing as fifty pumps. I don't know where we're getting all this air. So we just figured out why we're getting so much air. The coupler inside the car is leaking, so we're gonna tighten that up and rebleed it. Straight fluid. I think we finally got it. How's it feeling there, hillbilly? Stiff, but it's not bleeding off. What we like to hear. Okay, brakes are done. Let's get all these pedals bolted up tight. There's one on top of the frame that I don't think I can get. Well, actually, yeah, I can. I'm gonna try to get a nut to start on this one to push it down, twist it. Okay, it's pulling it. All right, go. Yep. The brake pedal, gas pedal, and battery box, done. Always hold the fitting in your right hand and you wrap towards you. So I'm building the fuel pump bracket that I'm gonna weld to the, to the bar. Before I get in there, I'm gonna make some GoPro mounts too. Hey, it actually fits. Almost like I knew what I was doing. This front one, I just need a bracket like this big. Pop a hole right there. Look at that. Fit perfect. I'm stressing out a little bit, so things are getting reversed. That ain't going nowhere. That one's welded. It ain't moving either. I'm gonna get in. Weld the fuel pump bracket, and then that's all the welding inside, right? I think that's all the welding, period. Cool. We're gonna reroute all the fuel line to where it's not kind of floppy and... Do not weld next to a gas tank at home. Not smart. <laughs> all right, we escaped an explosion today, kids. I got on Amazon at like three in the morning. I got me a wire assortment, and I'm super proud of this thing. And then what color should we do for the fuel pump? Yellow? Yeah, we'll do yellow for the fuel pump, blue for the fan, and then we're gonna need two grounds. All right, we got two harnesses built. Got them all in. Get that snapped together. Plugs in just like so. Just kidding. We gotta fix this one. I'll hurry and fix it, and then we'll have it ready. All right, our harness is built. Now we're gonna get the grounds put on and then get this thing tidied up. We're just gonna ground right off of here. Plug this in so it's done. Wiring is complete. There's one tire, got three more. All right, so where the fuel line goes through the firewall, we're putting it in heater hose. That way it'll be a little bit protected. Got he. Starter wire wouldn't be terrible except for they spliced it. So starter wire needs new. And all this is garbage. I got my seatbelt all adjusted. Got to kind of crash test it. I think we're good. Got my armrest. That's for protection. Got my cutoff zip tie and my pillow. So I can take a nap. We're getting close.
Got the battery box all adjusted. Now we're gonna start getting our wires built so we can get this thing fired up. We're running out of time. It's one o'clock. We have to leave by two. So we're not painting it. We're gonna put the roof sign on, hurry and get the wheels and tires done, and we gotta get out of here. I'm getting ready to mount skid steer tires on these rims for the derby car. Can't run the ones that are on it because it's a stock show, so we have to run as stock as possible rims, which is stock, stock. OEM stock. Now the fun part, putting the tube in and putting the front bead on the rim without popping the tube. We're gonna put 1050 billion pounds of pressure in this so it doesn't blow up. All right, we got 70 pounds in this. Gonna get a valve stem and go put it on. Fits like a glove. Done. I got a set of door wraps. So instead of painting, we can put some door wraps on. Seventy, right on the money. All right, we're gonna back this thing out, pull it out, get ready to load it. I'll show you guys what door wraps are. My buddy Lee from Ingstrom Graphics, he's the one who made them for me all these years I've been derbying, so I've got an extra set. All right, get this thing out of the shop. So we went for a test rip and realized that the back is still hitting the tire. So I'm gonna hurry and clearance some stuff so that we have a little extra time before it all comes into the tire in the derby. Now that we got that trimmed up, we're gonna really load it this time. Stuff. All right, let's head to the Derby. We're headed to the Juab County Fair it's in Nephi, Utah. We're gonna go and we're gonna run in the stock heat. So we got a 1974 Chrysler Newport on the bed. We call them shockers in the Derby world. This car, I'm gonna run in the stock heat. It is a wire car from the Wasatch Wipeout. So me and Hillbilly have been working for the last couple of days, getting it all ready, getting it worthy to go into the stock class. We're just about there. We'll go through inspections. Hopefully we don't have to make any changes and we'll go and wreck some cars. Yeah, hopefully we don't have to make any changes because we don't have nothing to do changes with. We didn't even bring a single tool. Well, we brought an impact because we're changing the front tires, but that's it. So if we gotta cut anything, we're gonna have to find some torches. We don't have anything. Demery just let me know that our favorite food truck's gonna be there, Mad Max's Grill. It is probably the best food truck I've ever had in my life. Yeah, that's true. You can't tell I'm hungry, so I'm already thinking about food. All right, so we got us a new fuel pump at Napa here in Nephi. He'll build, he's gonna ride on the car on the way to the arena and start putting it in. He's, He's just that way. Hey, Hillbilly, how was the ride? It was bouncy. <laughs> we made it. Hillbilly got the fuel pump all put in. We got it unloaded. We're gonna head over to inspections and see how it goes. We gotta cut some wire on the hood and then change the front tires and we'll be good to go. This is the cheater right here. He put this extra wire in. I can't even believe he would do that. All right, we got all the cheated items out. Now we just gotta get the front wheel changed and we'll be good to go. We've gotta go find some torches, cut the center of this out so that it will slip over the hub. We're getting close. We passed inspection. 
car's impounded. I'm gonna go find some food before I pass out. I had to do the same thing. I started to get real shaky and dizzy. Between the nerves, the adrenaline, the lack of food, the lack of water, days like this get a little bit crazy. So we just got them out of impound. Now we're gonna fuel them up, make sure they got water in them and get them ready to go to the heat. I drew heat number one in the stock. There's two heats. So we'll go watch the show and wait for our heat. Hopefully we can tear some stuff up. YouTuber? Look at this famous Chris. YouTuber. Shady bunch over here. Oh. It's like walking under a tree. <laughs> hey Matt, where's your car? I don't have my car yet. I sold all my stuff to Jace. I gave all my stuff to Jace. Buy more. Buy I new. That's coming off. Brandon's gonna hold it. We're gonna get suited up and go out and see if we can't win. Win or not, I'm gonna try to mess some stuff up. I only wear one knee pad and I wear it on the side. The reason for that is my knees knock sideways. Woo. This is like the best worst part. Oh, the seat was wet. Oh. Oh. My nerves are getting me. First person to come at me is getting it. You going in last? Yeah. He's a sandbagger. My tool dealer is a money thief. So I think something's bound up. So we're gonna figure it out. Can't win them all, but it's still fun. We're cutting a bar out of the bottom pulley because the motor's sitting right on it, so it won't turn over. Oh yeah, do you see that spring? Yeah, that's our problem. 
the sway bar came up and locked up on our lower pulleys. We're gonna cut that out and see if it'll start at least. Oh, no, oh, seven wants to get seven. Seven. All right, Tango. No. Hey, Yo, I'm a new motor. Huh? Seven. He can be ah, that's no. sideways. Well, the rail kind of went. <laughs> All I know is my shoulder hurts. The funny thing about this is it's pointless to fix this because it's over. We already lost. <laughs> you know what? We don't give up. But it's, we got nothing. Hey. You guys are making it work. But I think my shoulder might be broken in case anybody cares. I was in a car wreck. This fixes everything. Well, can't win them all. Thanks for watching.